Hi everyone, this is Srinivas, Product Manager Sampro. In today's demonstration, we'll talk about Microsoft Visual Studio License Compliance support on ServiceNow Sampro. So let's get started. So first, let's understand what is Microsoft Visual Studio. So Microsoft Visual Studio is a subscription that allows development team members to install and use common software like Microsoft SQL Server, BizTalk Server, Windows Server, and many other softwares to design, develop, test, evaluate, and demonstrate these softwares. There are many tenants to Visual Studio software, and let's discuss these tenants. The first tenant is that it's user-based licensing. So each development team member requires a Visual Studio license purchased through a subscription. Visual Studio cannot be used for production purposes. It can only be used for development and test purposes. It includes a wide array of software, including the common ones like SQL, Windows Server, BizTalk Server, and many others. The entire list is provided by Microsoft. It's provided as a subscription. There are many subscriptions, such as Visual Studio Enterprise, Professional, Test Professional, Visual Studio with GitHub, and so on. Each and every subscription has got a defined list of softwares available. And then lastly, it is managed through a portal. So there's a Visual Studio portal where administrators can check their subscriptions and assign subscribers. So those are the major tenants of Visual Studio licensing. Let's have a quick peek on the licensing rules. So it can only be used for development and test environments. It cannot be used for production purposes. The licensing model is per user based. It's available as a subscription mostly. And Visual Studio is provided as uh, many flavors like Enterprise, Test Professional, and, and many more. Uh, however, Community Edition is a free edition for individual developers. So these are the major licensing rules. For the full list, please check the Microsoft product terms. Now, what are the risks and challenges faced by attack managers? The first risk is... Uh, discovery of infrastructure and user access. How do I discover the software and the infrastructure used uh, for the users accessing the same? How do I determine if there are Visual Studio subscribers using Visual Studio in non-production environments or non-subscribers accessing Visual Studio software? How do I license Visual Studio software separate from my regular software? So this is the common issue that is faced by a lot of organizations because they have got uh, the common softwares like Microsoft SQL Server deployed in production environments and the same Microsoft SQL Server deployed for uh, non-production purposes that needs to be licensed to Visual Studio. Now, how do they separate the license consumption for these two different softwares? So that's one of the major risks that are faced by attack managers. How do I track license compliance of Visual Studio software? And lastly, as we just saw that Visual Studio has got a vast array of software. There are more than 100 plus softwares. How do I keep track of which subscription has got which softwares assigned to it? So this is all very hard for uh, SAM managers or ITAM managers. And let's see what ServiceNow SAM Pro does to support these challenges. The first one is that we support discovery of infrastructure and also the users accessing the same. The second is that uh, we support showcasing unlicensed installs if the Visual Studio is installed on a production environment, for instance, as well as a reason for the same. As we just discussed, you know, uh, it's important for, for SAM managers to determine current li uh, correct license consumption of the software which are deployed on production environments versus the, the software deployed on non-production environments, which need to be licensed to Visual Studio. So we support configurations so that this license consumption happens accurately. We support user-based license compliance model. And then we have got an entire content services support, wherein for each subscription, we maintain an accurate list of what all the softwares that are provided in each subscription. So that that list 
need not be maintained by our customers. So those are all the support that we provide for Visual Studio uh, for on ServiceNow SAM Pro. So uh, that was all about support. Now let's understand what it takes to set up Visual Studio on ServiceNow SAM Pro. So uh, imagine that uh, you know, you're a SAM administrator or a SAM manager. So what needs to be done? So first of all, ensure that the CMDB is accurate with the requisite demarcation of environments. This is really critical because this helps ServiceNow SAM Pro to accurately consume licenses for the installations. Thereafter, run discovery and check normalization results. Import or add entitlements. And once you add entitlements, you know, we provide ServiceNow content services support so that an accurate software model and their components are created with downgrades. So this is the uh, content services support that's really critical to ensure that for each different type of subscription purchase, accurate list of softwares that you are entitled to is added so that at the end, license compliance is defined accurately. Import the subscriber list from Visual Studio Portal and then add the subscriber list as an allocation to the entitlements on ServiceNow sample. Thereafter, configure a product install condition which just states that this consumption needs to be happened uh, for Visual Studio on dev environment and for, for the other software, for instance, SQL Server on production environment. This will ensure that the correct license consumption happens for the correct product. Run reconciliation, check license compliance results. So that was all about setup on ServiceNow SAM Pro. Of course, once, once you uh, run reconciliation, check license compliance, you would be able to determine the risk of unlicensed installs, uh, as well as those uh, installs which are not allocated in use. This will help you determine which Visual Studio software installs are on production environment, and also determine which are those non-subscribers having Visual Studio software installs. The important risk uh, which uh, the SAM managers need to take into account so that they can fix their Visual Studio subscriptions. So that was all about setup. Now let's get into details on ServiceNow SAM and understand how it works. For that, we need to understand a use case, which is a common use case for most of the organizations. So in this case, the customer has a SQL Server database software, which is deployed both on development environment as well as production environment. Of course, the development environment needs to be licensed with Visual Studio subscription and the production environment needs to be licensed with a SQL Server license. So that's what the use case is about. Now, before we go to the demonstration of it, how does it work on ServiceNow? So let's see the right side first, which is the entitlements and the models. You can see that, uh, you know, uh, we've added some entitlements and what it does is that uh, based on the publisher part number, the software model is automatically created because, you know, as I mentioned, there is ServiceNow content support. And with this, all the different uh, downgrade rights or the suite components are automatically added. So this is really important. And thereafter, uh, once the installation, in this case, you know, there's installation of a SQL server on a client computer, which is a dev environment, is found and discovered, it would create a discovery model because it would be normalized and determined as uh, normalized and licensable. And you can see here that this installation is inferred to Visual Studio. And this inference, if you see, happens due to the install conditions that you would have configured. So what this picture entirely represents that there is this SQL Server 2022 Enterprise Edition, which is installed on a client computer, which is a dev environment. And that got inferred automatically to Visual Studio 2022 Enterprise. And what that means is that ultimately the consumption of the license would happen for the Visual Studio Enterprise entitlement. So that's how Visual Studio licensing works. In the same way, if there was a SQL Server 
deployment on a production environment. In this case, uh, there is a SQL Server 2019 standard installed on a production environment. And you, you can see that the inference happened to SQL Server 2022 Enterprise because of the product install conditions, which basically match the installation to the correct entitlement. And in this case, uh, the consumption would have happened on the SQL Server 2022 Enterprise license. So that's how things work for Visual Studio. Uh, so let's see that in a demonstration. So in here, I've logged in as a SAM manager. Um, as, as, as we know, the first thing to check is whether I've got demarcation of my production environment and uh, development environment. So uh, usually we use the environment field which is provided on these server uh, server tables to demarcate, but you could use any other nomenclature as well. So in this case, there are about five Microsoft SQL Server deployments on uh, production environment. And uh, on the dev environment, I think there's about six installations. So that was the first thing to check whether the CMDB is clearly demarcated or not. Now, uh, as we as you just saw, that it's important to check if uh, the entitlements are added or not. So uh, let's see if uh, there are the requisite entitlements. So I will go into entitlement section, check for Visual Studio. And I can see here that there is a Visual Studio Enterprise entitlement which I've added. And uh, notice that I've added a publisher part number and uh, I've added the user allocations, which is basically the, the subscriber list from Visual Studio Portal. So once I've added this, I can check if uh, the downgrade rights have been added automatically. So based on the publisher part number through ServiceNow Content Services, these downgrade rights get added automatically. And then um, just to check the different softwares, uh, components which are added as part of Visual Studio, I can open the software model and I can go to the suite components. And here I can see all the different software components that are added as part of uh, Visual Studio. Again, automatically added as part of content services. Here, of course, I can check if, uh, for example, SQL Server is part of the suite. And of course, it's, it, it is. So this is regularly maintained by ServiceNow Content Services so that for each different type of Visual Studio subscription, you get an accurate list of software that you are entitled to. So I added uh, the demarcation of environments. I added my entitlements, my locations. I think the only thing now remaining is uh, the install conditions. So this, this is a uh, fairly new feature introduced in Vancouver where you could create an install condition for product. So in this case, I've created an install condition which says that for Visual Studio product, the installer environment is development. And for SQL Server, the installer on environment is production. What it does is that uh, for any installation across different versions and editions of Visual Studio, wherever the environment is development, uh, the installs will be inferred to Visual Studio entitlement. And so those installs would actually consume a Visual Studio license. And the same goes for SQL Server deployments on production. So that was all the setup that is required. I've run reconciliation. I can now go and check the results. So I go into the license workbench. And uh, first of all, let's see things for Visual Studio. I go to the Visual Studio software model 2022. Uh, I see the entitlements here. So this was the same entitlements that we just saw, about 100 entitlements. I can see the license metric result to understand uh, the consumption. So 100 licenses owned, about 10 consumed. So I can go into the 10. I can see that these are all the different users consuming the license. And I can verify these installs. And uh, you can see that these are all the installs that are on uh, development machines because they would have been licensed through Through, uh, through the product install conditions. So that verification is good. So now I can 
easily say that these are all the development machines that are consumed uh, with Visual Studio Enterprise license. So all these SQL Server deployments are deployed on development environment and hence through product install condition were licensed through Visual Studio. So that was about Visual Studio. Now let me go to SQL Server and then verify the same. Here again, uh, there are about 200 licenses, about 40 were consumed. I can understand that these are all the devices consuming the license. I can check the installs and I can go to the installed on to check the environment. And again, in this case, the environment has to be production. Environment is production. So that verifies the same. Um, now, just as a final check, if uh, you would want to understand inference at the install level itself, you can go to the installation section and uh, just pull in the inferred suite. And here you will see that for these installs, which are on development environment, the inferred suite is Visual Studio 2022 Enterprise and uh, 2022 Professional, which basically means that these all installs were licensed through Visual Studio 2022 Professional. So that was uh, all about Visual Studio license compliance support on Sampro. Let us know if there's any questions. Thank you.